Pikachu! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Graham, and welcome to episode one of Horus. Now, this is going to be a Let's Play series of a game that I have been wanting to play for freaking ages. Since I found out that it was being created, since I found out that 505 were publishing it, this game has been on the top of my list for of games to play. And recently Epic Games gave it out for free. So on the 16th of January, Epic Games released this game for free and I snapped it up. I was quite literally waiting for payday and then I seen that post and I was like, whew, don't mind if I do. So Horus is a wonderful looking game. It's a pixel art game, so it really appeals to me. I'll just read out a brief description of it. So eccentric British humor blended with cinematic narrative that has never been seen before in platform adventure games. Horus is a story-driven platform game peppered with nostalgic popular culture references which all bring a smile to any gamer who enjoys the 8 and 16-bit era. Well that is me, that is me down to a T. Learn how to master the strongest robot abilities and reunite Horus with his long-lost family. Adventure across the world and time and space to save mankind from total destruction, run and jump your way through the comical but touching story told by the charming robot protagonist and use your wits to overcome the classic 2D platforming challenges all whilst cleaning up a mess left behind from the robot war. Experience tons of variety along the way with parodies of classic mini games ranging from rhythm action to FPS. Oh man, this sounds so much fun. It's currently on Steam, it's on Epic Games and it was actually developed by two people, a guy named Paul Hellman and Sean Scapelhorn. This game was made by two people, guys. Two people! Which is insane. I have no idea if it's good, but I am really hoping that this is going to be a good game. But I have heard that it is ridiculously difficult, so we may die quite a few times. And there's no difficulty level. You can't select easy, hard, or medium. It's just difficult. So here we go. We're going to start a new game. Uh, new save data. Okay, so we're going to select number A. And I am using an Xbox One controller, and it is going to be quite a narrative-driven game as well. So um, if there's cutscenes and things, as always, I'm not going to speak through them, uh, especially if there's talking and things like that. If there's no talking, then I might, I might well jump in with what I, you know, like what I see. Like now, there's no talking. It looks like it's just the Horus robot getting built. And just look at that pixel art. How cool is that? He kind of looks like um, C-3PO a wee bit there, doesn't he? With the gold and He's maybe a bit fire, but yeah, definitely looks like C-3PO. I still can't believe this game was made by two people, man. Like that is, oh, and he's, he's number one. If this is Horus, then he's the first one of his kind to be created. Zero, 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 one. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. Oh, look at that, he even um, apparently has like a robot voice and you hear it. And it's, it's quite like a monotone voice. Oh, they're shipping them off. They're... I'm just trying to listen to that music. Hang on two seconds. Do you know what that music is? It's um, from... It's from that Robin Williams movie. Oh, no, it's not. It's from AI, is it? Is it from AI? Yeah, I think the, I think the music's from the film AI with Will Smith. Just try to I don't want to miss anything. I'm just trying to listen to the music to see if I'm not missing anything here. I think it's either from the film AI with Will Smith or it's from Bicentennial Man. That's the movie I was thinking of with Robin Williams, who actually is like an android. Horace Man 2.0. I can't believe they activated him and then just shoved him in a box. <laughs> it's like, there you go, mate. We don't care about you. You're just designed for clearing rubbish. Ooh. We kind of... Ooh. I'm like a zombie. Get out of my way. We also kind of look like... Um, we, ooh. I'm looking up. I'm looking down. Can I jump? No. He is. He's kind of... Eat brains. He kind of looks like... Um, the way he's walking. The way the pixel art. It looks like he's drooping a little and bit. So like his skin was drooping. I was born. The first people I remember seeing were the old man, the old lady, and their daughter, Heather. After they'd said hello, 
The old man powered me down, so he could install some software. I could tell they were nice people. The old man didn't give me a silly voice, or stupid personality. And the old lady didn't dress me like a clown. Although for some reason, Heather really didn't like me. Once I'd had time to get used to walking, the old man asked me to dash from one end of the room to the other. I guess I'm dashing? Okay. DASH! <laughs> oh, it is platforming. No, totally. JUMP! Oh, I thought I could make a basket there. This is so cool. Run! Go for it, horse. Oh, he's, he's Next, excited. The old man spent a couple of hours building some wooden platforms. He said he wanted me to jump up them. But I must admit, I was scared. It wasn't until I saw Heather and her mother happily climbing up them that I decided it might be okay. <laughs> well, isn't that convenient that it just, he just happens to want us to uh, jump up some platforms and things for a platforming game? I don't mind. <laughs> That's awesome, though. So Heather, um, I think, kind of is meant to be reminiscent of, again, Bicentennial the Man. The man then rearranged the platforms. He told me to try to reach the other end of the room without touching the floor. Heather said, the floor's made of... I was about to say that! When I smiled at her, she just frowned and looked away. The old lady arranged some pillows and blankets. She said it was in case I fell. But I think she just wanted it to look more like lava. <laughs> the floor is lava! I was literally just about to say that. Um, yeah, so the, the daughter, uh, there was a daughter in Bicentennial Man later on in the movie that really did not when like I reached the other side. Uh, the, the cyborg the did. just smiled and said, that'll do for now. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Chapter 1, Learning to Walk. Is this uh, is this chapter one complete or is this a starting chapter one? I'm gonna guess we're starting chapter one after we did that little tutorial there. Listen to that music! That is awesome. I'm gonna try and not turn the music down too much when I do the editing. Because obviously you won't be able to hear his voice. Oh my little pony! Um oh what's that pony's name? Oh, I don't know, my daughter would know. A couple of days after those first lessons, the family had a big meal. And I was introduced to everyone else. The professor was the old man's brother. He was very quiet, and always seemed to just kind of stare at me. He had lived with the old man for five years. The house was so huge they barely saw each other. He preferred instead to stay in his room, leaving everything up to his butler, Mr. Deck. As he insisted everyone call him, although the professor always called him Anton. For a while, he called me the yellow b <laughs> but the old man made him stop, as he thought it sounded racist. Does that he said racist? Mr. Silton was the old man's driver. Before he worked here he'd gotten in with some bad people and was the driver in a post office robbery, although it all went wrong for some reason. Mr. Silton showed me a video of his band. I'm sure some people must like it, but I just found it. Terrifying. So th there has got to be um, there's 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 music games when in this music mini games. She was the cook. She was a nice old lady. When she was younger, she had been a TV chef. Then years later, she had a small part in Coronation Street. Mr. Silton said before she worked for the old man, Alice was quite a hoarder. She kept old newspapers and bicycles, and something about a pool. In a shoe box. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there's a reference there that other. Oh, I'll tell you in a sec. I gathered everyone together to show them what I was capable of. What else does he do? asked Mr. Silton. The old man smiled. He can help around the house. Could he help me with my newspaper collecting? asked Alice. I'm not sure that's a good idea, said the old lady, but he can do all sorts of jobs. Yeah, said Mr. Silton, shove a stick up his ass and he can do Dex job. Now, now, said the old man, we have company, pointing to some important looking people. Two large men, both called Gary, set up what the old man referred to as lasers. 
he said again, I should try to get from one end of the room to the other, but I shouldn't be worried, as I had a special chip which meant no matter how damaged I was, I couldn't die. He said it was like infinite lies in a video game. But when he realized I didn't understand, he said he would explain another time. I like the little smile he just did, like infinite lives in this video game is like, ooh, smiles. Uh, there's a reference there that a lot of the American viewers might not get. Coronation Street, it's a British soap. Um, kind of like Days of Our Lives. I, know, I don't know if it's anything like Days of Our Lives, but I'm just referencing that as a equivalent. But uh, yeah, it's a British soap. Uh, let's see if we can get through this. Whoa! It's not too difficult so far, but I have a funny feeling this game is going to be Everybody uh, difficult as anything. Looking men. Not exactly a cold, calculated killer, is it? Said the man in black. The man in grey laughed. What kind of artificial intelligence was that? He asked. Move right, unless there's something in the way. Okay, okay, said the old man. He turned to me and whispered, they're going to make it quite a bit tougher. But I'm sure you'll be fine. Damn right we'll be fine. Damn right. We are going to rock this, man. You're my master. I will look after you. I will make sure that I do this to the best of my ability. Come on. And do we, oh, I'm curious as to what's ooh, over here. Can I, can I jump over here? Yeah. Yeah, I think I actually had to go over here. You know me, guys. I'm a, I'm a bit of an explorer. I'm a bit of an explorer. Um, so I'm trying to speak while doing this. It's not working very well. Yeah, so I'm a bit of an explorer. So I will try and explore in areas that I think I can't get to, or I think you shouldn't be going at that point, just to see if there's little, any little extras. I'm here. I got behind you, you punks. The Garys then rearranged the room one last time. The old man smiled. Now, now, there's no need to look so glum, he said. I'm still happy with everything you've done today. So this time, I was determined to do him proud. So he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. And actually, Horace is demonstrating emotion, which is a bit odd for an artificial intelligence, unless they've designed him to be like that, which they didn't really explain. I don't know, but he did smile. So, you know, that's something at least. Over here, Mr. Laser. There we go, I think. Oh, uh, we'll just jump over here. We're almost there. I'm going to try not jump too high because I don't want to jump straight into the electrics. Whoa, that was close. Am I there? There you go, Dad. The man's friends actually seemed quite happy when I made it through. We might have a winner after all, said the man in black. It's no kill bot 3000, but you can almost see the fire in its eyes. So what are they? A couple of days later, the old lady said she had a surprise for me. Are they wanting him to be dangerous? Room. She also wanted to play me some music. I wasn't sure after what Mr. Silton had shown me. Oh, look at me so happy. Whoa, whoops. I just pushed left As if and paused it. Amazing enough, the old lady then bought me a television set. I couldn't believe what I saw. I watched everything I could. Comedy, drama, horror, sci-fi. Absorbing, if learning. If anyone wanted to watch, I would happily watch with them. Then one day, the old man set up a small box. He plugged some cables into the television and said, this is what I meant when I said video games. Yes, are we going to get to play our first minigame? I played games at every chance I could. I took on everyone. I was unstoppable. Notice I the evolution of consoles there. Film and television. But to me, video games really were the highest art form. Is that uh, is Pong? Uh, no, is that Pong? Yeah, Pong. And was that a PlayStation 4 he was playing it on, or was that like an old Atari? Table tennis for two. Oh, we're gonna get to play our first mini game. This is so cool. Let's go. X to start. So this is basically Pong. Oh, I love Pong as well. Oh, this is such a blast from the past. So this is. Oh no, we won. This is definitely Atari sort of 
video game generation. Ah, I scored a point. So it's the first of three. I'm gonna I'm good at these. I used to I used to be ace at No! You have to be really You have to be really on it. I do not want him to win. Do not win. Do not wars! You need to, Where's the hitbox? <laughs> where's the hitbox on this thing? So I don't think it's gonna let me uh, get past this until I win. But the hitbox is like you have to be really in the middle. So I need to be honest. I need to... Come on. We're one point. Has he got one point or have we got one point? I think he's got one point. This is so difficult! It doesn't look difficult, but when you're using a joystick um, on your just with one thumb, it's quite diff. Oh no, we can we can score. Okay, go. I'm getting used to the hitbox now. I kind of know where I've got to hit it, so I, th I think we're doing all right. I'm just kind of wondering if we if we win one game, is that it for this one? Two points. Okay, we just one more. Two love. No, yeah, two love. I don't know how tennis works. I did read a story about a tennis player the other day asking a ball girl to uh, to peel his banana. Apparently this was not a thing to do. I don't know. Right, we're almost there. Oh, oh, that was close. That was very close. Can I put a spin on it or is it quite literally just... There we go, I won a game. Yes. Heather's birthday was a couple of months later. Her mum and dad had bought her a camera and arranged a day up by the sea so that Heather could take some photos, although I really don't think she wanted any pictures of me. Aww. When the old man asked the professor if he wanted to go, he frowned and said, I can't believe you want to spend time with that thing, it could destroy the world. I wasn't sure what he meant, but the old man just smiled and said, that's what you said about the Game Boy. Anton, how about you? I don't think so, said Mr. Deck. The last time I got in that car, Barry crashed us into a branch at Woolworths. British shop. I never would have gone into Woolworths of my own accord. The old man explained that the car was old and the brakes had failed, but Mr. Deck was having none of it. So Mr. Silton drove, and Alice came along for the fresh air. So yeah, Woolworths is now a, a closed down shop, although I do think they have a website. I enjoyed being outside. Although, the old lady kept telling me to be careful of the rickety old walkways. It felt like she was telling me off, but I think she was just concerned. She was. You know, parents are, are concerned about their kids, and when they walk next to a rickety old walkway, let me tell you, being a parent, you do. You, you come across angry, and you're like, don't do that! But actually, you're, you're, just, you're just caring for them, the that's nice. and I stood on the cliff tops, I could see something in the distance. I wasn't sure what it was, so I asked the old man. He said it was a battleship that had sunk in the 1940s. But he looked so sad when he spoke about war. I didn't see what happened, but the metal platform Heather was climbing on had collapsed. No, Heather! Saying, even if the rocks she was on looked very dangerous. The tide was rising, and we didn't know how long the coast guard right, we're, was we're going gonna to save her. Be. We're going to save her. So I offered to climb down and get her. The old man agreed, but said I should be careful, as Heather doesn't have infinite lives, like I do. Right, Horace, come on, man. We've got this. This is our chance to win Heather over. Whoa, Sonic style. Okay. Woo! I'm going quite speedy here. I don't know why. <laughs> what? Oh, we got this. Let's go and save Heather. Let's win her over. We'll become best friends and we'll get married. I don't know. That's what happens in um, Bicentennial Man. Spoilers. Right, Heather, Heather we've got you, son. Or door. Her leg was broken. So I picked her up as gently as I could. I decided it would be best if I didn't run the rest of the world. Makes sense, right? I mean, she, she's injured. Where did all these cables come from? Dangerous. Yeah, they'll, those kind of remind me of, you know, in, in Sonic when you ran over the blocks and they would disappear underneath their feet? I mean, I know Sonic's not the only game that does that, but those ones specifically, and the way they fall really remind me of Sonic. Let's time this, actually, because we don't want to run too quickly. So we can't run, because we... What did they say? Broke, she broke her leg? We saved her! An ambulance had arrived by the time I had made it back to the cliff top. The medics made sure Heather was okay, 
and then took her off to hospital. A few days later, we all went to see how she was doing. She was fine, but would have to wear the cast for a couple of months. Oh, they're, they're friends now. They'll be best friends. She'll grow up, and as I say, they'll, he'll turn human and they'll just get married. <laughs> That's what will happen. Robot saves local girl. Mechanical man to the rescue. Hero robot. Hero bot. Hero man. So I'm not quite sure that, I mean, he's, he's meant to be finding his family in this game. I don't know how they disappear. Maybe he gets shut down or something like that. But look, they're now playing together. They're really good friends. He's kind of like a kid himself, really, isn't he? Doctor's like, yeah, mate, you did a good job. And now look, Once she's all better. To know me, we became good friends. We enjoyed the same films and TV. She was also annoyingly good at some of my favorite games. After a while, she became very interested in how I worked. Soon she knew as much about me as the old man did, if not more. Now where are we? We spent the next couple of months visiting other countries, as when it came to teaching me things, the old man always liked to pick interesting locations. So has he got our hat? It looks he like that hat belongs to our jacket. Of mathematics to me at the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Taught me history in the dead of night, surrounded by mysterious giant stones. Stonehenge, yeah, cool. And even showed me science in action high up in a hot air balloon. This is why I was surprised when the old man took me to a restaurant. It was nice, but it seemed very somber compared to the previous grand locations. He said he just wanted to chat, and this was nice and quiet. Plus it was his favorite place to eat. This is when it turns out the old man was evil and sells him. The universe. Douglas Adams. Everything, really. When I asked him, why were we here? Why did we exist? He just smiled and said, life is like a game. Just don't expect to be finished anytime soon. When I looked puzzled, he said, well, everyone should have a purpose. So I asked him, what's my purpose? Why are we in the world? Then said, so you want to be a real boy? Which just confused me even more. Eventually the old man said, for now, I want you to help clean things around the house. Sounds like a good I purpose, have right? I'm impressed. As he then said, okay, I want you to clean one million things. It didn't sound like the meaning of life, but I suppose you've got to start somewhere. <laughs> so, so he's teaching this robot mathematics about the pyramid. All that jazz. And uh, he just wants him to clean around the house. And we're in chapter two. Learning my purpose. The next day, the old man said he wanted to install some more software. So he powered me down. Boom. When I came to, he said Mr. Silton had a joke for me. And that I should pull his finger. I don't think I got the joke. So the old man powered me down again. This time when I pulled Mr. Silton's finger, I got the joke, but it wasn't very funny. The old man then explained that he had installed a special chip which allowed me to clean away anything that was broken. He said it also tells me how many things are nearby, and how many smaller things are in a bigger thing. It all <laughs> okay. sounded very complicated, it does, doesn't it? but he said all I really had to do was pause and it would bring up all the information I needed. Nice. He then said he wanted me to find and clean all of the items in the room. He told me there would be some chains to climb, but that would be nice and easy, as I just had to press up. He then finished by saying, when I had collected all the items, I should come back here. Right, so we're going to do this level, we're going to clean up all the items. And uh, let's just quick pause a second, let's see what there is. Chapter 2. So junk total zero, junk here 135. So if I just gotta walk over it? 
Oh, nice. Okay. So I'm literally just walking over rubbish. Um, jumping on bins. Is there anything else I can jump on? I'll probably try and speed this up a wee bit. Oh, we missed, we're missing stuff. Stop missing stuff, Horace. Maybe we're going too fast for him. Yeah, we're getting it all, old man. We're getting it. Right, now I'm going to go up this chain so we've pretty much... Well, actually, we've met our quota. Have we? 54 much 54 more junk. That's such a weird that's such a weird thing to say, but yes, there's there's 54 more junk in this room. Is that that's not this game? <laughs> it's just collecting rubbish. But there's way way more to it than that. I mean obviously it's full of story, it's full of narrative. Same thing, same word, basically, two words for the same thing. Um yeah, full of narrative. And it's full of mini games and old references and stuff. I cannot wait to explore this game and see what it is all about. And we've almost, we've almost done this room. I need to get that bottle though. That bottle's like taunting me. But there's a beam there. There we go. Jump. Grab it. Watch out for this. Watch it. Is that Herbie? Mellow. That's obviously a reference to something. I don't know what that's a reference to. Maybe something in Herbie. It looks like a beetle though. So maybe it was Herbie. Or maybe it's like Herbie's sister or something like that. Have we got it all now? Surely that's all junk cleared. Spot on. Let's go and see the old man. Hey, Dad. We did it. The old man then asked the old lady, Heather, and I to follow him outside. I was happy too, as it was a lovely hot day. Love the, the music in this game. He was worried that Alice had been calling again. She had filled up a small barn with old bicycles and newspapers. Heather said, this would be a perfect chance to properly test my new powers. The old man thought for a second, then said, using the steptoe chip, I should find and clean at least 300 things. When we explained to Alice what we wanted to do, she seemed scared. But after the old lady kindly explained that, well, the barn was starting to smell. She said it would be okay. Yeah, especially if she's hoarding poops in a box. Thing, said the old man. If you want to use a door, just push up. When I was about to enter the old barn, Mr. Silton said he had seen some mushrooms growing inside. He asked me to give him any that I found. He then winked, but I wasn't <laughs> sure why. I'm not even going to explain it here. But anyway, guys, I'm going to end the episode there. This is a great place to end the episode because we are just about to start uh, level two, I guess, in our rubbish clearing beginning. I, I don't even know where I was going with that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Join me for part two where we'll continue straight from where we left off. We will clean out her room, collect all the mushrooms for... I've forgotten the guy's name. And we'll see where the game takes us. I really cannot wait to see how this progresses. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.